Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to disable YouTube short suggestions. We all know sometimes you got suggested videos that you're not really interested and YouTube is kind of spamming you with content that you're not really up to. So let me show you how you can actually disable this. First of all, let's launch the YouTube app. As you can see, when you're on the actual YouTube home screen, you get a bunch of suggestions with very, very mixed content, right? There is a uh, Muhammad Ali with Sylvester Stallone, Ray Dalio, there is some like viral, I don't know, some sketchy videos, some jokes or humor. Okay, so let's start disabling these particular recommendations. First of all, you want to click on each individual video on the top right corner where you see the three dots. You click on them, right, and you said not interested. Then you click on the next one and you said not interested. Uh, it's very important that some of the videos that you will see as a suggestions will be from channels that you're subscribed to. For example, I can see that I am subscribed to Ray Dalio's channel, right? So even if I click that I am not interested in this video, there is a very likelihood to get a recommendation sooner or later simply because this not interested will simply send a signal to the algorithm that I'm not interested in this particular video, but I'm still interested in the content of Ray Dalio. So you want to make sure that you understand that once when you actually click I'm not interested to a random video, they will not show you this video if you haven't subscribed to the channel anymore or they will not show you a similar video. But when you actually click that you're not interested on a video or content, to a channel that you're subscribed and you remain to be subscribed this means that uh, you're not going to get recommended this video again but you're going to get recommended videos from this particular channel because you're a subscriber so this is how you actually disable getting a random suggestions because random suggestions are coming from channels that you're not subscribed to they're just recommendations from youtube itself to see or simply uh, check the surface in your other variety of interests. This is how you actually refresh. So the safe bet for YouTube next time when you launch the home screen will be simply to show you only shorts. As you can see, we don't have any shorts uh, recommendations anymore. So next time when YouTube decides to recommend you shorts, it will only recommend you shorts from channels that you're subscribed to. Let's find a video that we want to download. Let's say, for example, we want to download this video about Evergrande liquidation, okay? You want to click on the three dots and then you want to choose the option download video. When you click on download video, you will see that YouTube will allow you to download this video in two quality options, 720 or 360. I really don't know why they don't have it 1080 or, or essentially even 4K. But the main point that you should be aware of is that YouTube will allow you to download any video only if you subscribe to the YouTube Premium. Essentially, YouTube Premium will allow you to watch videos for free without watching any ads, but they're also going to uh, allow you to download videos from the platform without any issues. Uh, YouTube Premium, of course, is not free. It's free only for the first month because it's a free trial but then it will cost you $18.99 but like I said guys this is the only legitimate way for you to be able to download any videos and you will be able to essentially enjoy these functions first thing I want you to do is to go ahead and click on the lower right corner and hit on your profile picture when you're at your profile landing page I want you to go ahead and click on the gear icon at the top right corner in YouTube settings new update, you have an option which is almost at the center of the menu, which will allow you to change the upload settings. So scroll down and click on uploads. Over here, you're able to essentially change the upload quality. You can do full quality, which means if you shoot at 4K, 8K, you can upload at 4K, 8K. Okay, this is what it actually means you can see the progress speed over here right the quality from 360 pixels all the way up to full quality this is how you upload in the highest quality possible this is how you see someone is actually uploading cinematic you know videos amazing also you're able to upload over wi-fi only 
because the data, you know, your mobile internet is not so good usually. So this is why sometimes you might upload something that is bad quality simply because the internet quality was bad. So you can simply opt out or opt in for this. When you actually launch the YouTube app, they will be thrown through the feed of YouTube. You want to go on your own profile. So you're going to click on the lower right corner where you see the icon says you. You click on it. When you're on your own profile, you want to click on the top right corner where is the gear icon. And then when you're at the settings, you want to click on manage all history. You click on manage all history and here you will have the options essentially to look up and to see can you opt in for auto delete meaning that all the history if you click over here you will have the option to auto delete all the activity after this period is passed for example in our case we have default function over here as 36 months this means after three years everything that is older than three years will be automatically deleted if you click on this one then of course you can readjust it to 18 months which is month which is one year and six months and then you can do only three months period if you set this one uh, you know the idea over here is that your most recent searches will be deleted if you pick up the year and, and six months this is probably going to be uh, a little bit less relevant to your current uh, search queries so this is the case over here and of course the last option will be the one that uh, will be queries most likely irrelevant at this point of your life because this is three years past. Also, you can scroll down and you can essentially don't auto delete uh, and simply go through manually. You can go manually and pick a particular time frame or activity in which you want to delete it. This is how you can go about it. In my opinion, guys, it's always better for you to go in manual settings. Also, right before auto delete, you have an option over here. It says saving your YouTube history. You can prevent doing all the heavy lifting and, and, and hard work by simply coming over here and you can simply turn off. When you turn off, you simply going to pause YouTube history. What this will simply do, this will limit or disable any personal experiences. This simply will mean that YouTube will not have the data to recommend you ads, to recommend you content, channels, shorts. Uh, so it will be pretty random. Of course, there are advantages and disadvantages of this. We all know there is a specific target uh, advertisement, target algorithm, target content generation, in which it helps the algorithm to recommend you stuff, right? Also, you can manually tick up or down these particular indications because they can collect data for uh, YouTube videos you watch, right? So based on this, they can recommend you more from the channel. They can, you know, generate or collect your searches on YouTube, all the queries that we already mentioned, the ones that are relevant, less relevant, and the ones that are already irrelevant. Uh, again, plenty of options over here. You can simply not allow them to do so, so you don't have to delete anything. Because if they don't keep up with your search queries and your search history or watch history, you probably not have anything to do it. But in my opinion, go on your settings, the steps I show you. You gotta go on the landing page, okay? Then you wanna go ahead and click on the three dots on the upper right. Over here you will find uh, two options. Essentially you have report user or hide user from your channel. If you just hide this account, this means that they will not be able to comment on your videos, but they're still going to be able to see your content. And if they're subscribed, uh, they're going to get notified every time when you publish. So if this doesn't work for you, the next step will be to click report user. And if the report falls under some of these categories, of course, you can utilize the option and you can simply select it. But if none of these options applies to your situation or your case, you can click the last option, which is none of the none of the above. Okay. Then you want to click next. Then you want to scroll all the way to the bottom of the page, and you want to click on help. Do you see the lower left? It says help. You click on help, and here you can essentially chat with YouTube, and you can essentially message YouTube and explain YouTube what's the issue, what's the reason for you going to block them and they will contact you and you can explain what's the reason and they will help you resolve the issue okay so let's say i'm gonna go on github okay 
and I'm going to search up maze C++. Let's just search that up and I'm going to write maze C++. And once you write that, look at this, you can start getting maze generators. So let's say we have this maze generator and this person created it in the C++, right? We're going to go in this. So it's a recursive backtracker maze generator. And this person has, you know, explained it. So this is the maze generator. You're going to write that and look at that. It's going to generate a whole maze that uh, you can work in. You can walk through it. You get the dependency. You get the compiling. It gives you the whole code over here as well with the files. So, you know, you can actually get the whole code by copying it and installing it. You can go to the actual file to get the code for yourself as well. And uh, that was that is what GitHub mainly is for. So upload code, get code, and, you know, just talk with other people regarding coding. And that is basically about it. So that's GitHub. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all of you next time. Goodbye. Trello tutorial, how to use Trello. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another video. I hope you all are doing great and are having an amazing day. In this video, I'm going to be quickly showing you on how you can use Trello for yourself in the easiest and most simplest ways possible. So to do this, what you're going to do is, first of all, you're going to come to Trello.com, create an account. Now, to use Trello, what you're going to do is you're going to click on Create, and you can actually create a board. So you're going to click on Create a Board, and once you click on Create a Board, you're you know going to answer any board title for yourself, and uh, get that board up and running. Now, once you get that board up and running, so let's say I've created this board for myself, right? I'm going to go straight into this board. It's going to look somewhat like this, okay? Now, how do you add things in this? So to add components, first of all, you're going to click on list and look at that. You can add lists for yourself. So, you know, it's pretty easy to add lists. Then in the lists, you can add cards and just keep on adding more cards. And to edit those cards, you're going to click on them and uh, you can change their descriptions. You can change their activity statuses and uh, you can change every other aspect of it like members, labels, checklist, dates, attachment, cover, custom fields, dependency, estimation, and all these things. You know, pretty straightforward and pretty easy stuff to get your head around. And that is how you're going to use Trello. So thank you for watching and I'll see all of you next time. Goodbye. MailChimp tutorial. Hello everyone. Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be talking about MailChimp and how you can use this absolutely incredible software. Okay. So to start off with MailChimp, what you are going to want to be doing is obviously you're going to, you know, sign up with an account. Now, what is MailChimp used for? MailChimp, in my opinion, is best for any type of email marketing that you want to, you know, do for yourself. It's great for any type of um you know sales crm it's great for lead generation it's good for your sales it's good for getting your company up and running and the best part about this is that it actually has a free platform to sign in with so you can sign up with it pretty easily okay just go into sign up for free now once you go into sign up for free it takes you into the actual sign up gig where you know add your very own business email that you want to to sign up with mailchimp let's say i'm going to add that then you have you know your username and then you can add your very own password as well. Okay. After adding your password, you're going to verify everything. And once you verify everything from there, it's going to take you into the actual, you could say, uh, work ethic and work uh, section of MailChimp. And that's basically how you're going to get started with it. Now, when it comes to using MailChimp, you are going to want to make sure to get a hold of uh, a lot of, uh, you could say, um, generative assistance. You can convert with email automations, create faster with generative AI, refine with segmentation, optimize with analytical things and support. You can get started easily with a personalized product tour. Okay, they give you a proper product tour. And you can see you can create actual custom journeys with automations. You can discover new ways to automate for yourself. Keep your email relevant and brand growing. And the thing is that the campaigning gives you a lot of great templates to work with, which is also pretty incredible. And you can add as many leads as you want get as many contacts, as many customers and as many users you want in this. Okay. And that gives you a really good general idea of how you're going to work with this. That's pretty much about it. Thank you for watching and I'll see all of you in the next video. Goodbye. Miro tutorial for beginners. Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to be quickly showing you Miro and how you can use this absolutely incredible software for yourself. Okay. So Miro is basically, as it says, a visual workspace for innovation. So Miro allows you to create these different charts. It allows you to create these different types of boards. Okay. And in those boards, you can use different elements like shapes, sticky notes, and all these other things 
to create a good workspace. And you can also use different boards like Kanban boards and all. And the best part about this is that you can make a whole funnel, a sales flow and like a whole lot of other things to work with. So I would definitely urge users out there to use the software because it's absolutely incredible to get a good idea of this. And it has a lot of integrations to work with as well. So definitely go ahead with this. And I'm also going to discuss the pricings. Now, Miro also gives you things like product management, engineering. It's for IT teams, UX and design, consultation and agencies. And there's a lot of great technical diagramming, whiteboarding, wireframing, mind mapping, retrospectives, scale product planning, and process mapping. So there's a lot of great things to take from Miro. And definitely, all of you users out there should use this for yourself it's the amazing and the most greatest thing to get for yourself then you have four plans for this as well you have free starter business enterprise okay so the free plan is zero dollars starter plan is eight dollars business plan is sixteen dollars and enterprise plan is obviously the basic typical enterprise plan okay and uh, yeah, that's the general idea that you need to get when you're working with uh, something like this. And that is basically your Miro. So thank you for watching all the way till the end. And I'll see all of you next time. Goodbye. Slack tutorial. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about Slack and how you can use this absolutely amazing application for yourself to, you know, do your actual workspace editing in, to manage your products, manage your tasks and keep your team up and running. So this is Slack basically. OK, so in Slack, you're going to make a workspace. So as you can see, I'm in this workspace right now. Now in this workspace, we have channels. Okay. You create channels for yourself and you can create more channels by clicking on create a channel and, uh, you know, add any type of channel you want to. And if you want any assistance, you can do that as well. But as you can see, I have all these channels. So links, team chat, uh, you have work and all these things. So let's say in team chat, I want to, you know, I'm going to write something like, uh, hi guys. And uh, then you can actually, you know, do an at and, uh, you know, message everyone. So it's pretty easy. It's pretty simple. And uh, it's uh, really nice to get a basic idea of how you're going to work with Slack. So just create channels. And in those channels, you're going to start working. Now, if you want to invite people to your workspace, what you are going to want to be doing is you're going to go to your workspace over here. Now, whoever has control of the workspace, what you can do is you can start adding people into a certain chat. So you're going to click on add coworkers, enter their name or email, and just send them an invite. And that should be it. So that's basically the idea of Slack. Thank you for watching and I'll see all of you next time. Goodbye. Smartsheet tutorial. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another video. I hope you all are doing great and are having an amazing day. In this video, I'm going to be talking about Smartsheet and how you can use this absolutely incredible software. Okay, so Smartsheet is basically a flexible solution for your work. Now, it's very similar to products like ClickUp, Monday.com, Asana, Trello. Now, the reason for that is that it's great for your work management, okay? It's a great management platform. It's great for task management, great for project management. Even if you want to, you know, manage your personal life, it's good for that because it gives you things like automations, digital assets, resource, team collab, dashboards, portfolio, proofing account, intelligent workflows, integration, no code work apps, and a whole lot more. So it gives you a whole repertoire to work with. It gives you the whole, you know, uh, you could say working standard to get your head around. And it helps you a lot in working. So do make sure to get your head wrapped around this pretty well, because it's an absolutely amazing software to use. And I would urge all you users out there to get a good grasp of this, to get a good idea of this, because like products like Smartsheet will help you tons. OK, so that's pretty much the main idea about Smartsheet. Thank you for watching and I'll see all of you next time. Goodbye. Rike tutorial. Hello, everyone. In this video, we're going to be quickly talking about Rike and how you can use this platform for yourself. It's one platform to streamline all workflows for you, a single app for all departments. You can manage projects, organize work, integrate all your favorite tools and collaborate and drive efficiency for yourself. So Rike is your, you know, team dashboard or team planning statement where you can actually mess around with different components of your work. Okay. And uh, you can actually use Rike 
in a different way. So if you've used, you know, stuff like Monday.com or you've used Asana or you've used ClickUp, then Rike will also work greatly for you. And trust me, Rike works great. It has automation, it has Gantt charts, project resource planning, and it has a great visualized dashboard where you can get tasks, processors, and a lot more. So you can see that you can get your analytics in this section as well. And these are all the organizations that use Rike. So there's PNG, Sega, Lyft, Simons, Pfizer, Ogilvy, T-Mobile. So you know you have a lot of features and brands using these. Then you can auto organize your intake, custom build for your teams, gain big pictures, visibility, customer success stories. You get Aerotech, Fitbit, Inspiration, all these people use it. And it has great reviews as well. So it's great to start off with it. It's great to use. And you can actually see why Rike. So it has great marketing, professional services, PMO, creative design, also has a great CMS. Uh, you get task management, workflow management, and the best thing, project management, where you can plan agile products. Now, planning projects for yourself is a different way to work as well, because you are going to want to make sure that the management works incredibly and the management works normally when you're actually getting the basic concept and basic idea of this, okay? So that's pretty much about it when it comes to Rike. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you all of you next time. Goodbye.